one shelf. Okay. Woohoo! Fifty-nine by fifteen. Oh, from the chief that came out today? Yep. From Vancouver. That's cool. Canada. That's cool. Hey guys, so I just came up from outside. My house is dark, sorry, but this is like the best I can do with light in the evening. We don't use any light during the day because we have floor to ceiling windows throughout the entire front of the house and the back of the house. I don't know, we just don't care for too much light, so we don't use too much light. I got eaten up by mosquitoes. Anyway, so the hubby just got home a little while ago. He cut a few pieces of wood for me because I have a few problems. I was driving myself crazy trying to decorate this cabinet and I could not because the top of the cabinet is inset. So anything you put up there like disappears. And I tried putting it on top of baskets and boxes and stuff, but you just have like levels of things and you can't get them to coordinate, whatever. So I told him if he could just, I gave him the measurements and asked him to just cut it whenever he was ready to cut it. But I guess he had a pretty easy day today, so he was willing to do it today. He cut the pieces for the top of this cabinet and then the top of another cabinet. And then I still need the pieces for the center part, which I'm about this to This is our life right now. <laughs> This is how my brain works, okay? I gather a bunch of stuff and then I put it in place. And right now, all of the large or all of the large tree ornaments are sitting there waiting to be put away and I didn't want to mess with it, so I started decorating and then I just couldn't get the decor right, so I just all of it's just not good. But for now, this is what I have. I need a top for that cabinet. He has cut it and he is about to burn it because it's kind of like on a rough wood. So it will singe off all the kind of like frayed stuff because it's going on the top of this. We don't really need it to be super sleek and polished or whatever. And then the base of this, there's two pieces. There's this piece and that piece. We're going to put a wood top just like I did on my other cabinets. Um, but that's gonna be later when we go and buy some wood or whatever. But for now, that's what I'm working on. And then we'll come over here and I'll turn on this light. I'm telling you, we don't really use light <laughs> in our house. Okay, so this one, the pieces that I have, is actually going on top of this uh, hutch because it's just white. And when you look in here, you kind of see the combination of the white and brown everywhere except for that one cabinet. Because when we did that, we used scrap plywood that we had and um, we were just working with like minimal supplies. So eventually I would want to take these boards out and um, strip them and restain them or maybe I can get him to burn them maybe burning them and they would make it look like all chippy and burnt and old and very rustic so maybe that would be a possibility but for now I have the pieces to put the top on there and to put the top on the other cabinet because I'm trying to complete out the decor for year-round decor and I give myself only a few weeks in this month to do it so that I can move on to everything else like the Etsy shop and all that so this is what the living room is looking like here's what this side of the fireplace looks like and then the craziness over there so basically all I really have left is this area and this area I'm thinking I want to turn this one into like a little seating area so I have my chairs here I move the rug here the dogs actually actually like it already. Um, it's really hard to see because again, it's dark, but it's coming out pretty cute. So we'll see how this works as a little lounge seating space. I like it. Good morning. It is Tuesday morning. Just brought this up from the truck. Found this really cool Regal cake carrier. It does lock. Super nice. But I was actually very excited today because I found a solution to our refrigerator egg problem. Aside from like finding an alternative to preserve them because we actually still get enough to eat and go through. Um, 
remember I told you guys that our eggs kind of overflow into number four. Found this yesterday for some stuff to the box. Hold on. So everything was 75% off. That was blue tag yesterday. So I found a bunch of goodies for a quarter. But this is what I was actually pretty excited about because it is going to let us store all of those loose eggs that come in and we can't cycle over yet. Um, it's nice and big. It has this little carrier, but I don't think we're gonna need it because it's basically just going to, well, we might need it because it keeps the eggs kind of structured from rolling around and then you can stack them up nicely without them just falling and in, falling into each other. But this was only a dollar and it's, it's pretty big. It's bigger than our egg carton size. Um, not as long though, but it is higher up. So that's pretty cool. I'm super excited about that for a buck. Yes, please solve that problem. Also, we have yogurt forming in that cooler right there, which is pretty exciting. I'll show you guys really quick. Pull it out and do a little of this. OMG, yogurt, nice big pan. And found these finally yesterday. Here's a look at the ones that we have. We use these around and then we have some of the little bit taller ones they're all dirty I guess but the hubby couldn't drink out of any of the glasses because they were always too small so I've been keeping my eye out on the big ones and these are huge perfect for him I only found three but to be honest three is all we need I'm gonna clean them up polish them up real nice they're very dingy and dirty um, got lots of dust and stuff in them but who cares because they are beautiful you gotta see the bones see the bones and yeah, super excited to add that to my collection. We are going to, or I'm going to the gym today. And when I get home, I'm gonna be working on the decor. Then I'll check back in with you guys in a bit. Hey guys, so I am home. I have taken out the yogurt here and I wanted to do a taste test. So I have one of my large jars of granola berry mix, it's like cranberries, raisin, whatever. Just a bunch of stuff that I've just kind of thrown together. And then I have my raw honey here. And I just took about, I don't know, like three spoons of the yogurt and then tossed in a bunch of stuff to go ahead and give it a try. It is kind of runny because it is warm, but I just want to taste it to see what it tastes like. Once you put it into the fridge, it should thicken up. So let's taste it. Mm-hmm. The hubby's gonna love that. I went out and got a big jar from Tuesday morning for six bucks, which was pretty good. And I'm just gonna take this, transfer it into the jar to pop it into the fridge. And it looks like, it's kind of thick. Okay, so this is what we got now, this way, when the kids want to get yogurt, they don't make a big mess. But I think I'm going to sweeten this one with agave honey um, because there's not much of this and the hubby loves regular honey and the kids really aren't that picky about it. So I'm going to get agave honey for them. Okay, so I get my um, organic agave from Aldi, but I think like Amazon prices and stuff are fairly comparable. Okay, so what is the purpose, right? To be honest, the hubby and I have wanted to commit to, of course, living off the land, eventually garden and all that. But you gotta start small, right? So whenever you have the product, you don't waste it. I don't wanna waste any of the product that we put our time in to grow. And I feel like if I already have an idea how to do all the things from scratch, then I'll automatically have that in my mind when we are coming up with different things that we want to include in our household or on our land to create food. That being said, guys, this whole thing, this and this was done with one gallon of milk and one 60 cent pack of yogurt, the Greek yogurt, no, the yogurt from Aldi that had the Bulgarian something in it and active culture. So 
yeah, a buck or however much your milk is basically is what you're paying. I know we're a big family. We're not perfect when it comes to reducing waste, but we do put our foot out there and kind of do little things here and there that I know make some people uncomfortable when they come over. But to me, it's kind of just our, our journey. It's our decision that we want to make. That being said, so exciting. I can't wait. I got to take a picture, post it to Instagram, all that. So if you're watching this, you've probably seen it on Instagram already, but it's delicious. Okay, so here's a little bit of what's going on. I opened up the door so you guys can see with the light outside. So what I know I need to do is number one, remove the hardware and do kind of like a black overspray, give it a kind of cast iron look. I will be doing that. And I think I'm gonna spray paint the wreaths a little black as well. I feel like there's just too many elements of brown and kind of like natural look where I need to kind of tie in that black that I'm actually going for throughout the house. So yeah, that's probably gonna be the next thing that I do to this little space. Hey guys, so I did a little experimenting today. I went ahead and made some of the buttermilk biscuits with my homemade yogurt. So this is what happened. In the yogurt that I made with the agave honey, I think it was too soon to stir it, so it came out very liquidy. The one downstairs is thick, so there's no other explanation except for the fact that I moved it too much before it was ready and didn't let it set and do it after it cooled. That's when I should have done it. Either way, turn it into this delicious, liquidy, creamy thing that has just a touch of sweet. So I decided to experiment with my buttermilk biscuits. What I did was, well I made a double batch here, which is four cups of flour and then all of the other ingredients. And I added, instead of adding two cups of homemade buttermilk, which is the this whole milk and vinegar combined I added one cup of the buttermilk and one kind of overflowing cup a little bit of the yogurt and guys it, they turned out awesome and now I get to kind of smother it in buttermilk or smother it in the yogurt and make it in, into kind of like a yogurty biscuity type thing I'm so excited all right guys so here we go I'm gonna take one of those and drizzle this up on top OMG, this is our homemade yogurt, thinned. Then I started prepping some strawberries for a strawberry pie. Just do some of this here. OMG, yes please. Good morning guys. So I am actually I'm actually on my way to go get Alma. We're going to King Dollar today, getting an early, somewhat early start. I went out to go feed the chickens before leaving, so it's about to be nine o'clock. By the time I get to her, it'll be 9.30. We get to King Dollar shortly after that. OMG, so I'm just dropping off Alma. We had a lot of fun. We went to Hair is crazy. We went to um, King Dollar, then Value Village, then Pennywise. And now I am headed home because it is that time where my alarm goes off and I should be on the road already to go home, to be home for Boogie. So I'll see you guys at home.
So I have a funny story about Onyx. He is our almost 13 year old Pitt and Dane mix. He is all black with a white stripe down his chest. Well, many years ago, I actually had a puppy, but I'd lived in an apartment complex and I had to keep him on the patio while he was being potty trained. Through that time, I was working long shifts. I tried to block off the patio gate so he wouldn't be able to get out. Well, he got out and unfortunately, I never found him. At that time, the hubby actually used to work around the area where I lived. We didn't know each other at this point. And he was on his way back into the station and found this little black pup all scraggly and dirty running down the road. And all he had in his patrol car was a sugar cookie. So he gave him the sugar cookie. And when he got to the station, realized that the dog followed him all the way to the station. When they get to the station, they have to transfer everything into their personal vehicles. He was driving a 350Z at that time, beautiful car, so clean, smelled so good. And he was kind of torn on whether or not to take this dog and let him sit in his car while he went into the station to finish up for the night, which was gonna take some time. He put him in the car, sat him in the seat, ran into the station, did everything he had to do and ran back out. And when he opened the door, Onyx was sitting there in the seat, didn't move a muscle. And he knew then that he had to take that dog home. A few years later, we meet and I go to the house and I meet Onyx. And I look at Onyx and I knew that this dog had to be my dog. I didn't tell him for a while. And then as time went by, Onyx would be laying down and I would be looking at him and I'm like, I know this dog, I know him. I love black animals. There's a thing with me and black animals, don't know why. And I had a connection with that little puppy. As the years went by, I knew that Onyx had to be my dog. So we always thought of how funny that would be for the tale of our story to somehow be intertwined through this dog. Wouldn't that be so cool? We love Onyx. Right, she's all the way up in there. Me and the bugs, sad bugs. <laughs> We're gonna go get some rocks for this driveway so we can fill it up. Here we go. Not dirt. We want to get this rock for our driveway to fill it all in. That way we can have a nice area to drive on and no dirt kicking up on us. It's a nice little place out here. Well, I was about to start painting, but the hubby has summoned me outside. So let's go see what he needs. <laughs> 